Hi, my name is Dr. Amanda Goodson. I am the pastor of Trinity Temple CME Church in Tucson, Arizona. I have our Bishop of the Ninth Episcopal District in the CME Church, Bishop Bobby R. Best today. We are going to be talking about the exciting Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. It is so amazing to see what God does through His people as we allow God to just minister to us and through us then we can see the manifestation of the power, miracles, signs, and wonders. So we want to talk about that today. We want to talk about Pentecost and then scriptures related to the gifts. But first, we want to take time to recognize the people that you have chosen to write um, these particular lessons for us in the Ninth Episcopal District. Can you share with us who you chose to write these things before we go and talk about Pentecost? Sure. Um, we selected uh, Emma Rager, who is a, uh, she's the Episcopal District Director of Christian Education, and uh, she is the missionary president for the Oklahoma region. Uh, she was selected to do the general um, teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, and uh, we will be taking the spiritual gift inventory. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure that uh, uh, we understood what the gifts were and how we operate in them. And so um, Dr. Amanda Goodson, uh, that pastor at Trinity uh, CME Church in Tucson, Arizona, uh, wrote the spiritual gifts according to um, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Um, I wrote the uh, spiritual gifts according to Romans 12, 3 through 8. And Dr. Michael Williams uh, wrote the uh, spiritual gifts according to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. So those are the writers for uh, the spiritual gifts. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to participate with the gifts in writing about the Holy Spirit. And this We'll start this, this series of lessons after Pentecost, but let's stop, let's talk about Pentecost. Can you share with us the meaning of Pentecost and how that will affect our discipleship? Sure. Uh, Pentecost, of course, is the first Sunday in June. Uh, I think it may be June the 3rd, or June the 1st, whatever, but it's the first Sunday in June. Mm -hmm. And Pentecost means 50. And so, um, you know, I think there were 10 days and then there were 40 days that Jesus was on the earth. Um, a 10 day, Jesus here on the earth, 40 days, and then 10 days after the Holy Spirit came. Um, uh, it was the promise of the Father. Um, and uh, uh, it is a, it's also a, a Jewish festival that is celebrated uh, every year. Uh, I think it denotes the, um, the festival of the crops of the harvest uh, coming in. And so it is a traditional Jewish holiday, but Jesus uh, uses it, uh, or God uses it, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That is prophesied in the Old Testament, Joel 2.28, that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, right. and sons and daughters will prophesy. And so... Uh, we have the Holy Spirit actually coming to live in believers. Uh, at this point in the Old Testament, at that point in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit descended, but then it was lifted. Uh, but now we have the Holy Spirit who has come to live in us uh, forever. It's kind of amazing how the Holy Spirit introduces himself to man when he comes the scripture says that he lit on man like fire uh, and cloven tongues of fire. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. And as people are listening, they are speaking in all these different languages and uh, the Medes, the uh, other, other people, they were listening to this. And the Holy Spirit was just introducing himself. It's kind of like a handshake. Mm -hmm. And instead of a handshake, what he did was he shook the whole place like yeah. earthquake. And that was amazing to me to see how the entrance of the Holy Spirit coming to live within men. Yeah. Amazing. We, we get uncomfortable when we start talking about the Holy Spirit. A lot of us get uncomfortable. Um, it is as if 
the Holy Spirit is something that we fear, uh, maybe because we don't have enough knowledge of, of who the Holy Spirit is. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the, um, the third mode of God. Um, we say God in three persons, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, so we have this Pentecost experience where the Holy Spirit comes as was prophesied. Uh, he likes upon them, as you said. Uh, and there were Jews from all over the world that was in Jerusalem. Uh, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, it's interesting when we say speak in tongues, um, people don't quite understand um, what it means, but they were speaking in a language that they had not studied, right. neither did they understand. And the only way that they could understand was that the Holy Spirit would interpret it, um, you know, for them. And uh, but the interesting thing that happened on the day of Pentecost was there were people from all over the world. And some of them heard them speaking in the languages where they have come from. Right. Um, without the people having learned the languages. Exactly. And so God does some interesting things. Uh, it, it, it speaks, I guess, to, to the mysteries of God. Um, but the Holy Spirit was given um, to assist us, to assist us in the way that we live. Uh, we refer to the Holy Spirit as a helper. Um, you know, so God sends the comforter. Uh, to be with us. Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless, uh, but uh, I'll leave. So in essence, the Holy Spirit is God with us after Jesus vacates the earth. Uh, God is still with us through the Holy Spirit, guides us, teaches us, lead us into righteousness. Uh, you know, that's the function of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us gifts so that we can operate uh, and, uh, you know, uh, please God. And, and Jesus told his disciples specifically uh, not to go and do the work that he called them to do until they go to Jerusalem and wait there for the promise of the Father. That's right. Uh, and uh, so it is critical for us to not go out in ministry without our power. The Holy Spirit is our power source. And um, you know, it's critical for us to be open to the Holy Spirit uh, so that God can uh, allow us to do more effective ministry. We're talking about the tongues, now we get caught up in the tongues and you hear people say stuff like, well, I got the Holy Spirit, but I don't speak in tongues. OK, uh, well, you know, it's, it may be possible. It may be possible that people can have the Holy Ghost and don't speak in tongues, but why would you want the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues? If the early disciples spoke in tongues when they got the Holy Spirit, I feel like I'd be cheated. <laughs> right, you get the fullness yeah, of what I God has to offer. Yeah, if I don't get the tongues, then I feel like I've been cheated. So, you know, if I am to compare apples with apples, if it happened to them, then I want it to happen to me. So why would I want the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues? So I think the thing that I usually say to people, just be open to the fullness of God. Right. You may not understand it, you may not comprehend it, but just right. be open and right. let God do what God wants to do. Absolutely. I really like that because as we started speaking about the Holy Spirit, even inside this building lit up, and so it's as if the Holy Spirit is coming uh, to to let us know that that he's here with us and I'm sure our viewers are are experiencing similar things of the Holy Spirit so let's go and talk about the scripture with with the gifts that is a awesome uh, uh, talk about the about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit and not to be afraid because he's our helper our comforter comforter standby our advocate our counselor and that's what he is, and he's, he's part of the Trinity as a person. So talk to us about the gifts, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 12. Now, there are different kinds of gifts, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit distributes them as he wills. There are different kinds of service in the same Lord, and the Holy Spirit works in everyone, and all the gifts 
are for the edification of the church and to glorify uh, glorify God. Can we talk some about uh, 1 Corinthians gifts? Yeah. Uh, concerning uh, the, uh, is it 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians okay. chapter 12. I did the wrong, uh, I did, uh, okay, hold on a minute. 1 Corinthians First chapter Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians the 12th chapter, okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the first thing Paul says uh, now concerning spiritual gifts, my brother and I would not have you to be ignorant. Uh, uninformed, that's ignorant, right. that's right. Um, so, um, you know, he talks about, uh, you know, um, the Holy Spirit that was given, and then he, he breaks it down and goes into the gifts. These are more of your supernatural gifts. Um, you know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, um, the scriptures say there are diversities of gifts. Right. Okay. God is a God of diversity. Uh, and even those who have the same gift may not operate in it the same way. That's right. God uses our personalities and that type of thing. So that's the beauty. That's the beauty of God. There are diversity of the gifts, but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, there are a whole lot of different gifts. And so these gifts in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 1 through 11 are not the only gifts. Right. They are a set of gifts, but they're not the only gifts that, that are talked about in Scripture. So they are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. They are different administrations, but the same Lord. They are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit, and this is key, is given to each one for the profit of all. God gives us the spirit, <laughs> not for our well-being, but for the well-being of all. I came up, I laughed because I came up in a spiritual church. I came up in a probably non-traditional CME church. And the gifts of the spirit were in operation. Uh, it was not unusual for us on a Sunday morning service to have someone to speak in tongues uh, and then somebody interpret. And sometimes it might go round after round somebody speaking to them, somebody interpret. So I was brought up with the gifts. And there were a few people around uh, who thought that they, you know, that God can do nothing unless he used them. Yeah. And so um, <laughs> I, um, I prayed to God and asked God for the gifts of the Spirit. And God asked me, why do you want it? He said, you want it for the wrong reason. Wow. He said, you should want it because you love my church and you want to see my church edified. Uh, and he said, it's important for you to understand there are going to be some messages, if I give you the gifts, that I would have you to speak that might not be popular with people. And the only thing that will keep you from uh, keep you speaking it will be that you love the church, you love the body, and you want to edify the body. Wow. And you want to do the thing that's pleasing in my sight. So he corrected me real quickly there. And then he gave him, you got some gifts now. And he gave, he gave me the gifts. And, I, and so I operated in the gifts in the worship service, um, you know, and um, God will give them to anybody that, 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 that's open to it and ask. And I did a lot of studying. You just read all Kenneth Hagin stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenneth Copeland might have done some stuff on the gifts. But, uh, you know, um, and study the scripture in reference to the gifts. Um, but the, the thing I think that stood out for me, the manifestation of the uh, spirit in verse 7 is given to each man, uh, each one, uh, for the profit of all. For to one is given, and then it begins to start naming the gifts. Um, fascinating gifts. Uh, fascinating gifts. Yes. And I think, it's, I think it's critical for us to get an understanding of the gifts. And that's what this uh, Bible study is designed to do, to give us an understanding of what is the word of wisdom? Okay. What is the word of knowledge? Okay. What is faith? Okay. As a gift of the spirit. What is healing? Okay, as a gift of spirit, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, uh, diverse kinds of tongues are different kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. Okay, these are the gifts that we deal with in this series of gifts, and um, you know, and they're given by the Lord for His church to profit. Wow. 
You know, there are some people that believe that you have only one gift. Okay. I believe that, um, and you can uh, please please elevate this thought. I believe that we can operate in any gift. You know, if God needs us to operate in a gift, then He will allow us to operate in that place according to uh, His 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 um, glory and our faith. And I think we can operate in, in all of them according to what he has purposed for his church. Yeah. Well, you just spoke really of that 11th verse that I didn't read. Um, but one and the self same spirit worketh all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So, you know, however God uh, chooses to do it. And, um, you know, we talk about the best gifts. Yes. Um, there are people who, you know, in that day, you know, thought that speaking in tongues was the best gift. But uh, the scripture tells us to covet or desire the best gift. Um, the best gift, of course, is a gift, and the scripture speaks to this, that edifies the people. Okay. As opposed to just when we speak in tongues, we edify ourselves, right. but edifying the people. I, I'm discovering too, the best gift is the gift that's needed at the time. As you were suggesting a few minutes ago, um, I think sometimes we should not just close ourselves to um, just desiring one gift, but to make ourselves available to God because he gives it to whoever he wills. Right. Um, and, and what is needed at the time. If I get so uh, stuck into the fact that uh, I operate in the gifts of, of uh, prophecy, when God needs somebody to just go and lay their hands on someone, you know, uh, and healing take place, he can use me in that gift as well. Absolutely. Because, see, the bottom line of these gifts is that I can't decide when I want to use them. They're not mine to decide that I want to use them. They're at the will of the Spirit. Right. When the Spirit directs me. Um, and, you know, and I think it speaks to us sometimes in terms of you don't always, it doesn't have to be a spectacle. Sometimes God might speak and tell me to just go lay my hands on someone. Right. Okay. I don't need, nobody needs to know why. You understand? God might want to do a healing. Right. And uh, so it's, it's important then for us to just be obedient and do what God would have us to do. Uh, Rev. Evelyn Carter Spencer, we used to call her Rev. Ev. Um, <laughs> she uh, tells the story, she told the story when she was living that um, um, she was concerned that if she prayed for somebody that they might not get healed. And, um, wow. and so she was you know, concerned about that. And she said, God spoke to her and said, if you pray for them and they get healed, are you going to take the credit? And she said, no, Lord. He said, he said, then why are you going to take the blame if they don't get healed? That's not our responsibility. God just wants us to be obedient and do what he would have us to do. But he operates the gifts. Um, and, uh, you know, he directs us, and it's by the power, it's by that one spirit that the scripture talks about. Wow. I really like how you illuminated the scripture that these are the supernatural gifts where the wonder working uh, power and operation of the Holy Spirit are evident, mm -hmm. where it would normally. You know, it normally happens, something happens, it defies nature, it yeah, defies yeah, gravity, yeah. it defies your thinking, it defies the things that you know how God manifests himself. Yeah. And I saw you're very excited about this. Yeah. I really like that. The super on your natural, yeah. where the Holy Spirit is operating according to his will and his choice. Yeah. R. W. Schambach shares a story about uh, a person that operated in the gift of faith. Um, an accident or something happened where an automobile was on a child and the mother came out and lifted up the automobile by herself and released the child from under it. She didn't know where it came from in terms of her even having the faith to believe that she could lift it up. Right. But she did it. Right. And uh, the child was able to get from under the, the so you're talking about supernatural, as you said, your God's super 
with our natural. Right. You know, God uses us uh, to perfect his will. It's, it's, it's without, you know, you can't rationalize it. You can't figure it out. And I've come to the conclusion as a preacher that I can hurt myself trying to figure God out. So I, <laughs> you can't hurt so, yourself. <laughs> so, so I just need to trust him. The Bible tells us very plainly that his ways are higher than our ways and his ways are past finding out. So I just need to trust God and know that God can do it and just yield my vessel and make myself available to God. Yeah, the scripture also says if God is hungry, would he call you? Yeah, what yeah. would you give him to eat anyway? Yeah. You know, if God was sleepy, would he call and say, I'm sleepy, can you stay awake and, and manage all of heaven and earth and everything, you know, while I take a nap, you know? But you know, in our church, I've also seen uh, where the manifestation of the spirit is just so strong, not only word of wisdom and word of knowledge, I've seen people. One lady, her her leg, one grew longer than uh, to the one was longer than the mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. I saw legs grow. Mm -hmm. I, I have seen people that haven't walked in years to get Killing. up out of their mm -hmm. walkers, and they walk. One lady, she walked, and she had her whole church at IHOP at midnight. She mm -hmm. went to I called her the next day to follow up to see, you know, because sometimes the the manifestation doesn't stick because mm -hmm. a person doesn't believe or whatever, mm -hmm. and making sure everything was okay, following up on the patient, and she was at fries and she was buying groceries, mm -hmm. going cook she was just so excited by the fact that she was able to walk yeah. I've seen that in the CME church yeah. I've seen people where um, you know their their backs were out of alignment they were able to walk where they couldn't walk one lady in California uh, wasn't walking hadn't walked her daughter hadn't seen her walk since she was 16 years old and her daughter was in her 20s or whatever and she was walking mm -hmm. yeah it's healing you know um, we sometimes conclude when we see TV evangelists operating in the gifts of the spirit that it's fake, yeah. that it's phony. Now, I don't doubt that there have been some that has been that, fake. Right, you know, that's, that's not sort of, genuine. But, but there is a genuine move of God's spirit. There are gifts of healing. Yes. And some people have specialties even within the gifts. They do. Some have uh, 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 the ability by God to be able to heal headaches. Some people might do, you know, other things. You understand what I'm saying? So they are different, but the the way we understand it is God is in charge of it all. It's by one spirit and God moves the way that he wants to move. But uh, the bottom line is God is a healer. God is a deliverer, yes. okay? Uh, God gives us the gifts of discerning spirits so that we can pick up when things are not right. You know, sometimes you can't always put your hand on what it was, but something ain't right in this room. You know, there's discernment. God gives us discernment. And sometimes he make it more accurate in terms of we're able to perceive more and we get more clarity than at other times. But uh, these are genuine gifts of the spirit that God gives to his church to be able because if people are demonically possessed, okay, Discerning of spirit is one of the gifts that will be used in terms of delivering people, you know, uh, and we need we need all of it in the church. We need it all. We may think we don't, but we need it all. And I think it's critical for us to be open right. to what God would like for his church to have. And so when you talk about demonically possessed, we're talking about demonized mm -hmm. and where a person is, you know, they have the Holy Spirit in them, they are saved, and a demon will come and and pull on a piece that's not totally submitted to, mm -hmm. to God or leverage something in the DNA, and that's mm -hmm. why our DNA needs to shape, be shaped mm -hmm. to Christ because we get His blood at that mm -hmm. point. So I believe a person can be totally delivered. Mm -hmm. I do believe that a, in, the enemy will pull and try mm -hmm. to affect us but we can be totally delivered, we can be totally healed, we can be totally a whole in Christ mm -hmm. because that's why Jesus come came so that we might have life, have it more abundantly. And some scriptures say to the full, so mean full measure, the wholeness of who I am. I love that. Yeah. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, mm -hmm. verses um, 3 through 8, and, and talk about, about these gifts. I really like what, uh, what the writer did.